Hello everybody, welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. Today I am I'm going to show you how you can set up a voice uh, over IP network using uh, an analog phone, an IP phone and a Cisco IP communicator. Uh, let's go to the next page of the presentation so I will show you the step-by-step -step guide uh, we're going to use in order to accomplish our to, uh, in order to set up the voice over IP network using uh, those three devices uh, first of all we're going to be configuring the CME uh, CME stands for call manager express and it's going to be we're going to be using a router uh, let's go back to this uh, diagram here this is the what we're going to be using this router is going to be the CME and we're going to have a switch that connect the uh, the phones uh, we have up here the analog phone on the left side in the middle we have the IP phone and uh, uh, on the right side you have the IP communicator as you see up here uh, so uh, we're gonna be doing just the configuration but uh, for this video uh, I don't want this video to be I, I will make it short so I'm gonna just do, uh, show you the configuration in the presentation so you gonna ha have to do it by yourself uh, first of all uh, we're gonna be configuring the call manager express after that we're gonna be configuring uh, the switch and the last uh, configuration is gonna be the home voice over IP so if you go back this, this, uh, to the diagram you see the analog phone uh, cannot use the uh, voice over IP without uh, what we call a home voice over IP this is like an adapter so it's gonna translate the because uh, this is this analog phone uh, don't understand the uh, uh, digital communication so it's going to use the home home uh, voice over IP in order to uh, talk to the voice over IP network so I hope you guys understand that uh, so now uh, for, for the configuration of the CME uh, first of all we, we're going to need uh, to define a pool, uh, a pool. Uh, as you see up here uh, I, I hope you guys already know how to configure uh, DSCP uh, to make this uh, this CME has a DHCP server so you're gonna be doing excluding the address that you don't want allocated allocate. and you uh, I, we, you're gonna give the pool a name like you see up here define the network you're gonna use this is the, diff the, the, the gateway you're gonna be using and option 150 is very important because this is uh, uh, this means that uh, the IP phone will be using this uh, IP address as the TFTP server and this IP address uh, is the IP address of the, uh, the CME or the router as you see up here so after that you're going to define the maximum directory numbers using maxdn as you see up here and uh, by using the telephony service command maxdn that means uh, we're going to be defining the number of, of directories like in this example up here I put 10 uh, usually I will advise you to uh, take more directory than you uh, need in your network in case you have you have growth on your network so you have to keep that in mind so you have to keep that in mind after you define the maximum directory you have to define the maximum iPhone maximum iPhone is the same thing so don't uh, choose a number that is uh, uh, bigger than the what you are authorized to use on your, on your, on your CME router so you have to, to keep that in mind so once you define the maximum number of phone and the maximum directory numbers uh, let's go back to the, let's go uh, to the uh, next page of the presentation you have to define what we call the if on DM all these I, I just I, I, if, I, if I remember I, I already made a video that explaining all these steps so I, that's the reason why I don't want to go back to the configuration uh, to define the if on DM uh, you go to the global configuration you say if on dm a and you assign a number like this is going to be number one if on dm and anytime you assign a number uh, the uh, that if on dm is going to take resources on your own so that's why you have to be careful of the number of if, if on dm you are you're going to be using on your own and after that you're going to give a number for the if on dm and this number is uh, those number uh, will be used by the by the phones those phone will use those numbers 
So uh, up here, you see I define only uh, three directory numbers. Uh, you see up here. But you don't, you are not uh, uh, forced to use like uh, if on dn1. If you want, you can do if on dn10. The number doesn't matter. It's, this is just like a tag. You know? But the, for simplicity, that's the reason why I put if on dn1, if on dn2, if on dn3. Uh, this is for simplicity. After you define, you define the if on dn, you can define, uh, you, you're gonna have to define uh, the if on and associate uh, those if on uh, with the directory number. The, like the directory number, directory number that we just defined it here. So we're gonna be going back to the global configuration and up here. You do, you do if on and you put a tag. Like this is if on one. And if on one, and you're gonna uh, check the MAC address. Uh, the MAC address of the of the of the if uh, of the if phone like if you let's go let's go to packet tracer so I will show you the diagram I have up here like up here in this home this home uh, voice over IP is going to represent the phone for the analog so if I put my mouse up here you're gonna see you see the MAC address is 0090 uh, you know up here I think 0090 0 C B2 and let's go back to the presentation so you can, you're gonna see uh, that uh, you have to take this MAC address manually from the phone and you have to associate the MAC address with the phone so that means that phone will use if on one and the button uh, command it means the, the first the first number the the, the, the the first number represent the the button for the phone so let's go back up here so I will show you uh, let's go back to see this copy tracer. Like if up here, if I open the uh, the IP communicator up here, uh, let's uh, let's go to desktop. I open the IP communicator. Okay. You see, those are the buttons. You see up here. So button, they are not numbers because this is a packet trace here. But, but in the real world, you have uh, the, the button will be number. So that's the reason why if I go up here, see uh, the first number represents the number for the button and the number one represents the directory number. So that means button one is going to take the directory number if on DN1. So it's going to be associated with this number 1001. One and the same thing. Uh, if on two and if on three, is it, that's the same thing. So once you do that, now the next step is to uh, turn off registration because uh, with the call manager express by uh, uh, default, the phone will auto uh, do auto what, what you call auto registration, and that's not a good idea. That's the reason why you need to do uh, to uh, turn off auto registration. Uh, after that, you are gonna create what's what we call the CNF file. Because uh, this is a uh, packet tracer, but in the real world, uh, creating the CNS file uh, can be take a long time because you are, you will have to not only create the CNS file, but you have to uh, download uh, some file uh, those uh, <laughs> that the phone will be used in order to uh, uh, to talk to the to the call manager. So you have to keep that in mind. After that, you have to de you will define the IP source address. The IP source address. This IP or the source address means that's the, going to be the source address uh, the, the the phone will be using in order to contact the CME. Uh, this is very important. This is, uh, uh, and the command is up here. You put IP source address and the the IP the interface uh, the IP address of uh, one of those interface of the router. Uh, usually, people will advise you to take a loopback address. But for this uh, scenario, in simplicity, I take the the physical interface of the router as a sort of, uh, the source uh, address for the for the phone, and you have to define a port that the phone will be using in order to uh, contact the, the IP address. And by default, the port number is 2000. So once you do that, uh, let me go to the uh, next page. Uh, in the next page, we're going to be configuring the switch. Configuring the switch is a piece of cake. You just assign the the interface to the uh, to the voice value. 
to the voice VLAN because uh, the, the phone they will be using the voice VLAN, but the phone uh, the, the port will be in the uh, access mode as you see up here. So this is a piece of cake. So once you do that, uh, once you assign the uh, because for the simplicity in this uh, in Cisco packet tracer up here, as you see up here. Uh, as you see up here, I just make a voice over IP network. I didn't, I didn't use any P, any any PC. Uh, if you uh, uh, if you want, you can add the PCs because phone. Uh, you can put the phone first and you put the PC last because the the PC can connect to the phone because the phone has a, a switch port uh, the, that the the PC can connect. But for this example, uh, for this example, I want to be simple. That's the reason why I just make a voice over IP network, as you see in packet tracer. So uh, once you configure the switch, now the last step is to configure uh, the gateway address for the home voice over IP. This is very simple. Uh, this home voice over IP, you will give him the uh, a, a default a default gateway. So it's gonna be done up here. Let's go back to Cisco packet tracer. You open the home voice over IP. As you see up here, uh, you go to uh, configure, and you see up here I give him the gateway address, and the gateway address as you see up here is the IP address of the uh, uh, of the of the router up here, because this router is going to be the the the, the gateway ad, uh, the the default gateway for all these devices, and I I use the default uh, VLAN which is VLAN 1 because I want to make uh, this video as very simple for you guys to understand so once you do that uh, if all uh, is uh, all your configuration as I saw you in the presentation is done you will be able to uh, from uh, like in the analog phone if I open the, uh, the analog phone I go to the GUI like you see up here and let me make this uh, windows a little bigger a little bit bigger. You see up here, the phone already has his number. It is 1001. And if you go back to the presentation, that's what we have because uh, when we configure the iPhone, uh, the iPhone DN, uh, the iPhone DN for the for the the iPhone one, we also see that iPhone with uh, uh, with the analog phone because we put up here type 88 and that's the analog phone. So let's go back to the to the packet tracer. As you see up here, so if I open up up here, and this uh, let's check those of the other phone to see if they have uh, their their numbers like this IP phone. Let me open it up here. Uh, so let me make uh, make this uh, windows a little bit bigger. Uh, now let's go to the GUI. As you see up here, excellent. This phone already have has uh, his uh, uh, number and it is assigned the number 1002 so if I want I go back to, to the analog phone and I will dial let me dial 1000 let me, let me pick up the phone first 1000 1000 1000 1002 You see, excellent. The phone is ringing. As you see up here, you see the phone is ringing. So uh, if I go, if I go back, uh, you hear the phone is ringing. Excellent. You see the phone is ringing. I can pick up. If I, if I pick up, it's uh, connected. So that means everything is working fine. Because uh, I already explained you how the Cisco manager call manager function uh, for the, uh, the previous video because this phone, all those phone will contact the CME in order to talk to the other phone uh, same thing for, for the IP communicator if I uh, can go back let me, let me see the IP communicator uh, excellent already has his uh, phone, uh, his number and the number is 1003 but for the IP communicator, communicator, you have to be careful because you have to go to the PC and uh, you have to configure the PC up here on the desktop. Let me 
show you. Let me show you. On the desktop, on IP configuration, you have to use DHCP because it's going to be uh, you have you have to choose uh, the option DHCP in order to uh, let this PC uh, get uh, its own IP configuration via the, the DHCP server. So let me hang up, hang up this phone up here, the analog phone, which is uh, let me hang up, hang up the phone. Okay, the line is the line is disconnected. So now let me go back. Let me go to the IP communicator, and I will try to. Let me go to the IP communicator. Let me open up the IP communicator. So now I will dial 1000. That's going to be the analog phone. I will, I want to call the analog phone 1000 1001. As you see up here, and I click dial. Once I click dial, you see excellent. The phone is ringing. So that's your how you can use your IP communicator because the IP communicator is inside the PC you see because this is the button number one like uh, you see now it's ringing if I go to the to the analog phone to the analog phone I can pick up the phone you see you say the phone is ringing you see the phone is ringing excellent mm -hmm. so now you can pick up and now it's a connected so uh, that's what I was trying to show you. So I hope you guys uh, learned something from this video. I would like would like to thank you for watching, and I see you for my next video. Thank you.